Hello everyone and welcome to this short tutorial in which we will be creating a painted wood material from start to finish in Substance Painter. So to start off I have opened up Substance Painter and you all can do the same. So one thing that we should know is to create a material or to start texturing we first need to have a model. So instead of downloading one or creating one from scratch what we can do is just go over to file select open sample and you will find this meet mat file over here just double click on it and here is a handy little model which we can use to create our painted wood material and later on we will like convert it into a smart material so that we can use it on our other projects also so yeah what i will do is in the texture set list i will just disable the body and the base so that we are just working with this thing only all right you can see the layers over here you can just select this layer and let's delete this one so now we can start from scratch creating our painted wood material so the first thing that we need to do is we need to add a base layer for wood. So if you just go over here in the shelf, if you don't find uh, the shelf over here, you can go over to window and in the views, you will find or maybe toolbars, I think. Yeah, assets over here. Just click on it. And yeah, you will find the shelf. So let's search for wood and we can find this wood American cherry. This base wood material would be available in everyone's substance painter. So you can just drag and drop it now over here like this. All right. So as we can see, we have the wood material all over our sphere. So select it and we can adjust some settings from over here. So as you can see, it is a little bit shiny. So you can increase or decrease the roughness. If I set it to zero, you can see it is like very reflective. Also, if you want to know, uh, I'm moving the scene around by holding alt and using my left mouse button to rotate it like this. We can use the scroll wheel to pan and the right click to zoom. We can also like hold shift, then use a right click to like uh, move the lighting. So yeah, these are a couple of things that you should know. And I'm pretty sure that you already know. Also, if you want to change the lighting, you can also change from over here. Maybe like you can select this one or this one. So yeah, we can just go for anyone, but let's just select the earlier one only. Yeah. So you can hold shift and right click to see how the lighting reacts to your material. Obviously we don't want it to be this reflective. So we will increase the roughness. I want it to be fairly rough. So let's set this to 0 0.8. All right. Next, uh, if you see over here, there are different channels, the color, metallic, roughness. If you will just like disable the color channel, you will see the color information is gone. Or if you disable the roughness channel, you will see all the roughness information is gone. So I actually want to disable the height channel because I don't want all of this height information in our base layer. We will be adding height information, but we will add our own customized height info. So let's just disable this and you can see immediately see the effect. Yeah. Next, you can also increase or decrease the scale from over here of the overall texture. And you can also change the projection type. You can see we have triplanar and we have multiple different projections, but let's set this to UV only. And I will increase the scale to somewhere around five maybe. Yeah. And also for the color, I have already decided on a color. I don't want it to be like uh, this saturated. I want the color to be like kind of dark so i will just put in the values for the hue i want this to be 0 0.054 for the saturation i will set this to 0 0.452 and for the value i will set this to 0 0.39 so yeah kind of dark and yeah i think this is fine all right so now our base layer is done and the next layer we will be adding is for the height info that we like just disabled but we will add some of our own so you can add uh, another fill layer let's set the color to black and i will increase the roughness to 0.8 only for this also and let's set the height value to 0 0.1 for now it would be like uh, too much but i'm just setting it to 0 0.1 to make a point clear and let's add a black mask now add a fill layer 
you click over here and search for the texture wood and you will find this wood 01 let's just select this and you can see we have some like wood knots over here but it is like too much right now so what we can do is first let's go over here this is the opacity section you can see we can increase or decrease the opacity so i will set this to maybe 50 for now and also set this mode to multiply yeah so now you will see uh, if i click over here again and increase or decrease the height information you can see how it is reacting on a material so earlier we set this to 0.1 but in my opinion i think 0.1 is uh, too much so let's set this to 0.01 for now and now next what i want to do is i want to like increase the scale of this uh, as we like increase the scale of the texture for this thing like this i also want to increase the scale for these wood knots so if you just click over here and increase or decrease the scale you will see that nothing happens the reason for this is right now we are increasing or decreasing the scale of this particular layer but we want to change the scale of this particular mask so click over here then select this and now if you increase the scale you will see so yeah let's set this to 4.5 and also i will rotate this by 90 degrees so that they are over here like this yeah that's better the hardness you can see how it reacts so it is like totally up to your preference but let's keep it at 0.5 only i think that looks pretty good all right i will rename this layer to wood knots and now what we can do is first let's create a folder and name this folder as painted wood select them both drag and drop it into this folder now uh, i will add another folder and let's name this one as base now select them both and drag and drop them into over here so yeah so that our material stays organized and next we need to create the paint layer so i will create another folder and let's name this as paint all right so now we need to create another fill layer and you can see how it uh, already acting as like paint you can see all the wood knot details that we added appear over our paint layer so i will rename this to base again this is the base for our paint layer and now uh, let's set the color for this i think something like that yeah i think that's fine next let's increase the roughness a little bit as it is paint we still want it to be a little bit shiny so i think 0.25 uh let's try 0.25 for now we can always change it later on but i think yeah 0.25 yeah i think it is fine next i will set the height value to 0.05 right now if we change the height value nothing happens but i will show you later on why we are doing this so for now let's just set the height value to 0.05 and move on further okay next i will press control c then control v over this layer to create a duplicate of this as you can see now there are two base layers but rename this one to paint variation because we want there to be a little bit of color variation so now select this layer and select the base color and let's change the color to for the hue value i will set this to 0.131 saturation i will set to 132 and for the value let's set this to 0 0.7743 so you can see a little bit of yellowish color but right now the complete uh, model or the object is of this uh, yellow color only but we want to have like a variation that means like a mix of both these layers so what we will do again is we will again add a black mask to this and this time let's add another fill layer search for clouds let's select the clouds too and you can see uh, if you just enable and disable this layer 
there are like a little bit of white areas over here so that creates like a paint variation but also we can just select this clouds to a uh, mask you can increase or decrease the scale you can see how we are editing everything and also you can increase or decrease the balance to reduce the amount of yellow color so you can see how we are increasing it and decreasing it so for now uh, let's increase the balance and set it around 0.31 maybe you can also increase or decrease the contrast increasing the contrast would make it like very sharp like this but obviously we don't want that so set this to zero and next what i will do is i will decrease the opacity of this layer to somewhere around 40 so that the variation is like not very obvious so yeah now as you can see it is very faint but still there so i think that looks pretty good So before proceeding further, let's just hit Ctrl plus S to save our Substance Painter file and you can save it anywhere. So I will save it in an already created folder that I was working on earlier. I will name this as Wood Material and now let's hit save. All right. So the next thing to do is we added like paint variation. So the next thing would be. So if you remember, we added like a base material uh, under this paint layer, this base wood layer. So now what we want to do is uh, we want to create like scratches and like edge damage on our uh, paint layer so that we can see the base layer under it and it will give it a lot more realistic feel. So yeah, let's do that. So to do that, we will just select the complete paint folder and add a black mask. We will proceed in a similar way like we added paint variation. So yeah, now we have added a black mask and next I will again add a fill layer. You can click over here and search for, let's delete clouds and search for directional noise. And you will see all these five uh, textures. All of these are pretty good for adding like uh, scratches for stuff like wood. So I will just select directional noise one. And you will see something like this uh, right off the bat. It does not look very good. But the first thing that I want to do is again, I want to rotate it like this by 90 degrees. Okay, so next what I want to do is let's increase its scale to somewhere around 2 maybe. And also I will set invert to true. You can see it is like much better now. Uh, next what we can do is we can, you can see increase or decrease the balance from over here. So obviously we don't want it this much it was 0 0.5 earlier so let's half it and set it to 0 0.25 again this is like a very preference based thing and you can set it however you may like and now i will just show you what i was talking about earlier so if you remember we added like a little height information in a paint layer so if i just quickly set this back to zero you will see how all of the height information got removed from our material and if I just hit control plus Z, you can see all these scratches are like a little bit inwards. So that gives it a little bit more realistic feel. You can see uh, if I just increase or decrease it, how the scratches are reacting to our wood material. So again, I will maybe increase it a little bit to 0 0.08. Yeah, something like that. I think this looks pretty good, but I will add another fill layer. So select this mask. Let's add another fill layer. And this time I will add directional noise too. And again, first rotate this by 90 degrees. And for the scale, let's see. First, I will also enable invert for this. And now what we want to do is uh, we want the earlier directional noise, the effects of the earlier directional noise to be visible with this one also. So I will set the blending mode to multiply. And you will see. As soon as I do that, I have it control plus Z to set it back to normal. You will see this was earlier, but if I set this to multiply, all those earlier uh, effects of the directional noise one appear back again. And if I set this back to normal, they all disappear. So make sure to set it to multiply and yeah. Now what I will do is again, I will decrease the balance. maybe what we can do is we can just invert this and now i will increase the balance 
so it is basically opposite does not matter that much let's set this to 0 0.9 we'll set the scale to something like 3 yeah i think something like this looks pretty good all right again i will add another this time i will add a filter and for the filter i will select sharpen and you will see as soon as i sh add sharpen all these details are very sharp but obviously i think this is too much so let's set this to 0 0.5 maybe for now Also, I will select this base layer and set the height back to 0 0.05. I think that was much better. All right, so I think our wood material is coming along pretty nicely. The next step to uh, add is, so the next thing to add is, uh, we will go over and add a little bit of dirt to our wood because right now it is too clean. So outside of this paint layer, let's add another fill layer. I will rename this to dust, give this a dark color and also increase the roughness. We don't need to give it any height information. I will add black mask to this. Let's click this cross over here and come in the smart mask section. So instead of now using a fill layer, I will directly use a smart mask. So I will use this dust occlusion one. You can see there are a lot of different uh, smart masks. You can just drag and drop them and you will see how it affects uh, your material. You can try multiple different smart masks and you can see uh, we will have various different results. So you can do this according to your own needs, but I will be adding this dust occlusion. So we'll see this is a pretty basic one. It adds like dust to our corners and crevices. So in this particular material, we don't see any like much big change but in your custom models you will see it makes the wood material looks a bit more realistic with adding all those uh, dust in with adding all those dust and dirt in corners and crevices you can also select this from over here and you can see you can increase the dirt level you can play with the dirt contrast it will make it like more sharper but obviously i don't want all of that you can also add a little bit of grunge but yeah it is like totally up to you what you want to add but i think something like this would be fine i will also select this paint layer again select directional noise one and maybe try increasing the balance a little bit so no i think this is too much let's move it back let's try 0 0.28 Yeah, I think that is fine. We can move ahead with this. Also, one more thing that I want to show you is if you go over here in the texture set settings, you can increase the size from over here to 2048 to 4096. This will like increase the detail and you can see everything is like much sharper and like more realistic because the texture size increased from 2048 to 4096. So yeah. I will create another dust layer. So I will just duplicate this. So press Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Select this mask and hit this cross to remove this. And this time let's add a fill layer. And again click over here. And this time I will add directional noise 2 again. Set the rotation to 90 degrees. Let's increase the scale. Somewhere around 4, I think. Next, one more time, I will add another fill layer. This time, uh, remove all of this and select clouds. And let's add clouds too. And you will see as soon as I again set this to multiply, what will happen is. If I just turn this off, you can see uh, if I just select this mask, I can 
control both of them just by using this cloud mask only actually the uh, effects of both of these will appear over the area where the cloud mask is working so if i said from material to mask you can see this is the cloud mask and this is the directional noise one so they both of them are overlapping so if i just change this from over here you can see if i uh, increase or decrease the balance of the directional noise too i am just editing in these white parts only and if i select the cloud too and i try to increase or decrease the balance you can see how we are editing it all over the material so yeah this way we can like add multiple fill layers and multiple different uh, textures or these grayscale textures to create like to create like more complex masks so yeah i will set this back to material and you will see uh, we can just adjust the clouds one to add a little bit of more dust like this yeah i will set the balance to somewhere around 0.3 you can also change the scale or i think maybe one was fine yeah obviously we can edit it later on and you can also change it according to your preference but for now i think that looks pretty good also i will select this main fill layer and i will give it a little bit of height information as you can see how it is reacting on a model but obviously we don't want to give it this much i will set the height to again 0.05 so that it is very faint also if you want you can just select this again and let's add another sharpen filter you can see how if i increase or decrease the sharpen filter it reacts with the material it likes makes the edges of the details a lot more sharper so obviously again we don't want this much but let's set this to around 2 this time and yeah i think our material looks pretty good and we are done with it let's hit control plus s to save our files and if you want you can like select all these uh, fill layers that we added for the masks and you can edit them however you may like to give it a little bit of your own touch and also let's set this to 0.3 only or no yeah i think that, that is fine next what we can do is we can create this into a smart material so for now if you want to use this uh, this particular material this folder that we created in any other project you won't be able to do it because it is currently in this project only in these layers section but you can just right click over here and create this into a smart material let's rename this to maybe painted underscore wood material just right click and create smart material and as soon as you do that you will see over here in your smart material section so you can just select the smart material section and if you select for painted underscore wood you will find your material over here so what this will do is if you create a new project and like you add your own custom model you can use this wood material over there just by dragging and dropping so i will just quickly show you how we can do that but first let's hit control plus s and now we will create a new substance project but before doing that i wanted to add one more thing to our material so just select this layer and let's add another fill layer and this time we will be adding a roughness variation so what i will do is as you can see there are a lot of different channels over here but i want to add a variation to our roughness so i will just quickly disable all of them except the roughness channel one more shortcut is uh, there if you want to uh, just quickly select one single channel and disable all the rest of them just hold alt and click on that particular channel and all of the remaining channels would be disabled automatically so yeah let's move further now i will rename this layer to roughness variation let's add a black mask to this and add a fill layer this time i will search for grunge 001 so i will be using this one again you can use any one of them there are a lot of uh, grunge maps they are similar like black and white texture maps but with different kinds of results so i will go with this one so as soon as i do that uh, you won't see the uh, effects immediately but 
let's just first increase the scale a little bit and if you adjust the balance then you will see what i'm talking about but first i will select the fill layer and reduce the roughness to maybe 0 0.2 and now if you again click over here select the crunch map and try to increase or decrease the balance you will see the roughness variation coming up but obviously we don't want a lot of like areas to look very wet so i will keep the roughness variation at a low amount so let's set the balance somewhere around 0 0.25 you can enable or disable the layer to see what it adds to our material so yeah, i think it is a nice bit of addition also if you want you can go over here and change this drop down menu to roughness and now you can edit the opacity of the roughness channel if you just see over here if i set this to zero you will see all the roughness variation is gone now so if you want you can maybe place it at 80 so that it blends in a little bit better with our other roughness layers yeah i will just decrease the scale a little bit I will set this to 0 0.3 and yeah, I think rest everything is fine. I will right click over this and just quickly delete this one so that we can create a new painted wood smart material. So just select this right click and create smart material and automatically it is over here. So now I will create a new project and as soon as you do that you will see this window pop up. Over here in the file section we need to select the model that we want to texture. So currently, if you don't have any model that you want to texture with this particular uh, smart material, you, you can add any model of your own or maybe you can download one. But if you don't want to do any of those things, uh, I have provided you with a very simple model of a cabinet. If you go into the resources files of this course, you will find it. Just click on select and you will find this cabinet model in the files. So just select this, hit open, rest everything remains same. Now hit OK. Make sure to save your project. And yeah, this is the very basic cabinet model that I came up with to make use of this smart material. Also, whenever we create a new substance painter project, the first thing that we need to do is bake the mesh maps. So the reason we need to bake the mesh maps is because all those features that we use of substance painter like smart materials, smart masks or generators all make use of the maps uh, that are the mesh maps. So every time we create a new substance painter project, we first have to bake the mesh maps. So just click on this button. Uh, there are a couple of settings that we need to change first i will change the size of the mesh maps to 2k i will disable id i will also enable these two things and set the anti-aliasing to 8 by 8 and just hit bake selected textures so it might take a little while i will just resume the video when everything is done all right guys so the bake is done now just hit ok and to add this smart material you can just drag and drop it like this so yeah that's how easy it was before moving further, I will change the size from 1024 to 4K so that we can view the texture a little bit better. So yeah, let's move back to layers and you can see our material looks pretty good. The wood looks pretty good and obviously after adding the smart material, now you have to think like what kind of prop you want to go for. You can customize the material like however you may like. If you want to go for like a pretty damaged asset or like an old cabinet, you can just select this paint layer, this directional noise one. You can increase the balance and maybe increase the damage on this particular model. You can select any of the like uh, these directional noises and increase the damage on it. You can also go ahead in the dust layer and increase the dust so that it looks like more dirty. So yeah, this is what I was talking about. You can customize it however you may like. But if you want to go for like a cleaner look, you can you can disable this directional noise too. Select this one and maybe set the balance to zero. And as soon as you do that, you can see a cabinet is looking like it is a little bit more cleaner and and it looks like that is pretty new in age. Also, I will open up this base layer, select the wood knots, this mask from over here, and increase the scale for it.
like seven. Yeah. yeah. Laggy because of the four. Okay. And we can just go back to two K. So that our substance painter is a little bit more responsive. Yeah. Also, if you're feeling like uh, the sharpen is too much because the details are looking like very noisy, you can disable the sharpen and you can see immediately it looks like very less noisy. But yeah, you can go for any kind of look you want. Maybe I will tone it down to one. You can also reduce the amount of dust like this. So now it looks like completely new, like a new cabinet but we can increase the amount of dust and enable back the directional noise. This one also, I feel like instead of the sharpen, I will reduce the height 0 0.02 maybe for both the paint variation and the paint layer. Yeah. Let's set this back to somewhere around 0.2 I think so yeah this is what I was talking about you can customize the uh, smart material however you may like you can also change the color of the paint layer to give it a completely new look so these were all the customizations that you can do to create a material of your own you can use this material on any of your different models that you want to use it on so yeah this is it from my side guys thank you for watching also make sure to check out some of my other in-depth courses like of creating complete 3d environments and 3d props using substance painter blender unreal engine they are available on all kind of different platforms like udemy skillshare artstation so yeah thank you for watching